What's up guys, I'm CJ and welcome back to my galaxy. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books that are sitting on my shelf un unread. You see, as an avid bookworm, as someone who loves books, stories of all different types, I have a long book list of unread books. You know, us bookworms have a tendency of buying books and then forgetting about them and then rereading the books we've already read because we're used to those books, we know we enjoy those books. But I am very excited to read a lot of these books that are sitting on my shelves. I just haven't gotten the time to read them yet. I have all the books over here that I'm gonna talk about. There's a bunch of them. I'm gonna let you guys know about the author and I'm gonna read out the blurb and tell you what I think the book is about and then I'll get back to you in later episodes about what the book is actually about, you know? Do a bit of a review on them. Alright, starting with these humongous books. I got gifted these ones by a friend for my 17th birthday. Um, which one's the first one? It says on here. This one. I think there's a third book that I don't have. This one, this book is called Aurora Rising by... It, there's two authors. This person specifically got me this book because I was writing a novel a series with a friend at the time. Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. These two people here. The year is 2380 and the graduating cadets of Aurora Academy are being assigned to their first missions. Star pupil Tyler Jones is ready to recruit the squad of his, squad of his dreams, but his own boneheaded heroism sees him stuck with the dregs nobody else in the academy would touch. A cocky diplomat with a black belt in sarcasm, a sociopath scientist with a fondness for shooting her bunkmates, a smart-ass tech whiz with the galaxy's biggest chip on his shoulder. An alien warrior with anger management issues. A tomboy pilot who's not into her squad leader, in case you were wondering. Oh my gosh, okay, I see how it is. Entire squad isn't even his biggest problem. That'd be Aurora Jylin O'Malley, the girl he's just recruited from interdimensional space. Trapped in cry asleep for two centuries, Aurori is a girl out of time and out of her depth, but she could make the catalyst that starts a war millions of years in the making. Entire squad of losers, discipline cases, and misfits might just be in the last hope for the entire galaxy. Nobody panic. I don't talk to this friend anymore, so just in case you were wondering, um, I also don't talk to the friend who gifted me this either. Oh, the unput a downable bestseller. Just, what a word, unput a downable. The party. One invitation. A Lifetime of Regrets by Robin Harding. This one is about just a girl, I, I, some of these I won't completely read out because I've already read some of the blurbs, know what it's about. Also, otherwise this video would be way too long. This one is about a girl who's turning 16, hosts a sleepover and some stuff goes really wrong and basically exposes dysfunctional families with the facade, facade of looking perfect. These ones were gifted to me by my parents because my parents know that I read a lot. <laughs> I think I think these books are probably from the past two or three years of gifts that I just haven't read. This one's a dystopian that I've never read. Dystopia and the and apocalypse novels are generally my most favourite. I love writing them as well just because of you know I like to say it's the human survival instinct versus human morality. I quite enjoy that. The predicted thief, addict, delinquent, murderer. Your future is not your own by Christine Seifert. That, that's the name. Can you see it? Who will it be? Will the head cheerleader get pregnant? Is the student council president a secret drug addict? The whole school is freaking out about Profile, an experimental program that can predict students' future behavior. The only question Daphne wants answered is whether Jesse will ask her out, but he's a predicted, and there's something about his future he's not telling her. Ooh, eerie. I actually really wanna read this book. I'm very excited about it. I just haven't had the time I had such friends. What if the beginning is the end by Meg Gatland Venice. Ven Venice? Yeah, there we go. This book is about friendships after, who is it? Charlie Parker dies. This is like friendships from the blurb. Seems like friendships, coming of age sort of books and like 
generally your kid dies, young adult saga, you know? And obviously it's about friendships, so. I've had this one for a long time as well. Oh, this one's probably even longer though. Oh, the blurb is so cute. Dave and Julia discover they may that by skipping the cliches, they've actually been missing out on high school. They may be even love. <laughs> Never, always, sometimes by A.D. Al, Al said. This is, I think, this kind of seems like more of a romance sort of thing and a coming of age, high school sort of thing. Next book, Nemesis. He killed me, he killed me not, he killed me by Brendan Wright? 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 This one's actually really cool. It's been happening since Min was eight, every two years on her birthday. She's murdered by the same man in cold blood. But hours later, she wakes up in a clearing just outside her hometown, alone, unheard, and with all evidence of the crime erased. Across the valley, Noah just wants to be like everyone else, but he's not. Nightmares of murder and death plague him too, though he does his best to hide the signs. And as the world around them begins to spiral towards panic and destruction, the two troubled teens discovered that people have been lying to them their whole lives. This sounds really similar to a book I read when I was a kid and I don't remember what it was named, but there was a French boy and an English girl. I think they were like late high school, early college, uni sort of aged kids. And one of them was a part of an ancestral line with like superpowers in a way and another one of them until his 18th birthday is immune to death. Basically he can die as many times as he wants and like in minutes he will come back to life and it was this ancestral chosen one sort of story, really cool story. I don't remember what it was called. If I ever find it, I'll let you guys know. I loved the story, absolutely adored it. So I'm super excited to read this one. I don't think I've ever read the blurb of that one. So that sounds exciting. I don't remember when I got that book. <laughs> Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. Uh, this book seems to be either a fantasy or dystopia book uh, surrounding ethical questions that the Author Suzanne Young previously did in another series. I haven't read that one, but you know, it sounds interesting, so I might one day. It shows defiance of young girls against their guardian um, in an, the Girls of Innovations Academy. This one kind of seems like the typical twists and turns of fantasy or dystopia and bringing up the questions of morality and eth ethical choices. Oh, I can't pronounce this name. The Mother Fault by Kate Mildenhall. Mildenhall? Mildenhall, I think that's what it is. You will not recognize me, she thinks, when I find you. I think this one's supposed to be a dystopia book. It says, imagine a world as terrifying and, and visionary as Margaret Atwood's Gilead. So that makes me think it's a dystopian book. Min's husband is missing. No one knows where Ben is. Everyone wants to find him, especially the department and they should know. The all-seeing government body has fitted the entire population with a universal tracking chip to keep them safe. But suddenly, Ben can't be tracked, and Mim is questioned, made to surrender her passport and threatened with the unthinkable, her two children being taken into care at the notorious best life. Cornered, Mim risks everything to go on the run to find her husband, and a part of herself long gone that is brave enough to tackle the journey ahead. From the stark back roads of the Australian outback to a terrifying sea voyage, Mim is forced to shuck off who she was, mother, daughter, wife, sister, and become the woman she needs to be to save her family and herself. So it seems like an Australian story version of uh, Margaret Atwood's Canada and the US. You know, obviously, if you couldn't tell by the accent, I am Australian. So, you know, that's part of my identity. I love reading books that are a part of my identity, which brings me to the next category. My queer novels. We can do better than this. 35 Voices of the Future of LGBTQ plus Rights. You should add an IA at the end of that. We talk about achieving LGBTQ plus equality, but around the world, LGBTQ plus people are still suffering discrimination and extreme violence. How do we solve this urgent problem allowing queer people everywhere the opportunity to survive? And we can do better than this 35 Voices explore this question. Through deeply moving stories and pro evocative new arguments on safety, visibility, dating, gender, care, and community. They map new global frontiers in the front 
for LGBTQ plus rights. This is less of a fictional book, more of telling stories of experience and all the issues surrounding discrimination of these marginalized communities. And I will be talking about th uh, this book once I read it. I will be making videos for all these books, but I'm gonna emphasize a point on this one specifically. Uh, a friend a friend suggested this one to me and I was gifted this for Christmas all out. The no longer secret stories of queer teens throughout the ages. This one specifically is supposed to have an asexual story. I'm pretty sure this is that one. Um, an asexual story in it. Um, and I am asexual, arrow ace myself. I love to see asexual romance stories where it's not pressured into a subplot that makes sense. I'll extend that on different videos in the future. Take a journey through time and genres and discover a past where queer figures live, laugh, and live, yep. Figures live, love, and shape the world around them. 17 of the best young adult authors across the queer spectrum have come together to create a collection of beautifully written, diverse historical fiction for teens. From a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood set in war-torn 1870s Mexico, Featuring a transgender soldier, two girls falling in love while mourning the death of Kurt Cobain. Wow, chills. Uh, to forbidden love in 16th century Spanish convent. To an asexual girl discovering her identity amid the 1970s roller disco scene. All Out tells a diverse range of stories across cultures, time periods, and identities, shedding light on an area of history often ignored or forgotten. I'm so excited to read this one. The diversity in it sounds so freaking cool. The last book we're going to be talking about today is Loveless by Alice Oseman. It's just such a cute novel. How long before her story begins? This one I didn't know about until I received the book is a gift. It was all sinking in. I'd never had a crush on anyone, no boys, no girls, not a single person I'd ever met. What did that mean? Georgia has never been in love, never kissed anyone, never even had a crush. But as a fanfic obsessed romantic, she's sure she'll find her person one day. As she starts university, Georgia makes a plan to find love. But when her actions wreak havoc among, among her friends, she questions why romance seems so easy for other people, yet not her. With new terms thrown at her, asexual, aromantic, Georgia is more uncertain about her feelings than ever. Is she destined to remain loveless, or has she been looking for the wrong thing all along? It seems more like it's going to be an aromantic story, which I love. Uh, you know, play, I I don't think uh, there are enough stories about platonic soulmates, platonic love in media and books and stuff. So I really am greatly anticipating these sorts of books. So that's it for today. If you did like this video, please leave a like and subscribe. If you want to comment any book recommendations for me, please leave a comment down below. Or if you'd like to see any videos on this, what you think of the books, if you've read them already. I'm anticipating reading all of these books and hopefully you did enjoy this video just as much as I did love recording it. But until the next video, bye!